Throughout the time in which humanity has existed, millions of mysteries have been buried deep beneath the earth. Although the sands of time may cover the past, they cannot always keep them there. Sometimes the past returns in snippets and extraordinary discoveries that reshape our understanding of history. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three amazing discoveries. Two thousand year old sleeping beauty found in a reservoir. As the water level lowered in the reservoir of the Yenisei River by the shore of Siberia, near the Seino Shushinsiska Dam, the remains of a two thousand year old woman were uncovered. The Seino Shushinsiska Dam is known as the ninth largest hydroelectric energy producer in the world and the largest hydroelectric plant in all of Russia which is why the discovery of a long-deceased body in the reservoir was deeply unexpected. Upon recovering and analysing the woman's remains, archaeologists found that she had been buried with a little pouch, filled not with coins or gold or gems, but rather a pouch of pine nuts. She was buried wearing a silk skirt and given what archaeologists described as a funeral meal. Alongside the pouch of pine nuts, she was also buried with a makeup box made of birch, inside of which laid an ancient Chinese mirror within a felt bag. To add to the woman's unknown identity, there was also a Hun-style vase in her grave, leading archaeologists to believe she might have been a Hun woman. It's believed her remains were mummified by complete accident due to the circumstances of where she was laid to rest. Archaeologists from the Institute of the History of Material Culture in St. Petersburg discovered the woman's body when they were searching the Tiver Republic's shoreline. The team noticed a stone rectangular structure which resembled those built for ancient burials and went to explore. According to one of the archaeologists, the mummy was in quite good condition, with soft tissues, skin, clothing and belongings intact. Dr. Marina Kulinovskaya, a renowned researcher, claims that the lower part of the body was especially well preserved. This is not a classic mummy. In this case, the burial was tightly closed with a stone lid, enabling a process of natural mummification. The mummification is extraordinary. The woman's mummified remains had somehow stayed in pristine condition despite having been suppressed underwater since 1978 when the dam was first built. Still, the woman's body remained in great shape, which allowed scientists to test and analyse her skeleton and the circumstances behind her life and thereafter. The deputy director of the institute, Natalia Soloveva, stated, On the mummy are what we believe to be silk clothes, a beaded belt with a jet buckle, apparently with a pattern. Depending on how elaborate the buckle's pattern is, it could suggest she was a woman of great wealth in life. It's unclear whether the mummy was buried 2000 or 1900 years ago, but either way, the woman's remains have resided in that area for far over a millennium. Experts have not finished analysing the remains, but some have hopes of using a computer program to recreate what the woman might have looked like all those millennia ago. In the right circumstances, nature can quite easily mummify a human body, although it does not happen often. From the heights of the Italian Alps to the mummies of Chile's Chinchorro, or mummified remains found in Siberia's ice, bodies either frozen or left in the dry climates of deserts can mummify in mere weeks. Bodies decompose as their cells break down, but if the body's fluids are removed, the decomposition process slows. Keeping the corpse dry removes the chance for the body's enzymes to break down those cells. This keeps the body mummified. Additionally, certain types of bacteria, fungi or even metals can aid in the preservation of a body. Scientists hope to figure out more about this sleeping beauty and who she was soon. Severe droughts have revealed the Spanish Stonehenge In the wake of the horrendous heatwave that befell Europe this summer, a striking discovery was made. This year's drought has been the worst drought in half a millennium. But at the very least, the suffering has rendered fruitful archaeological findings. Due to the lowered water levels in Spain's countryside, the Dolmen of Guadalparral, or otherwise known as the Spanish Stonehenge, has been uncovered. 
The Dolmen of Guadalparral is a prehistoric circular structure composed of almost 100 megalithic stones, which archaeologists and scientists estimate to be at least 8,000 years old. Dolmen were ancient stone structures thought to have been primarily used as tombs. Angel Castano, the president of a Spanish cultural organization, stated, All my life, people had told me about the dolmen. I had seen parts of it peeking out from the water before, but this is the first time I've seen it in full. It's spectacular because you can appreciate the entire complex for the first time in decades. The six-foot-tall megaliths were first found by the German archaeologist Hugo Obermeyer in 1926. As such, people have known about the dolmen since the 1920s, but rarely have people had the chance to see them fully and up close due to the waters that usually submerge them. The construction of the Val de Canis Reservoir led by Francisco Franco in 1963 permanently drowned the structure underwater. The top of the dolmen of Guadalparral can be seen when the reservoir is at a low capacity, but this summer has revealed more of it than the public has seen in decades. When, who or what made the dolmen of Guadalparral is an enigma, much like the British Stonehenge. A theory suggests that the dolmen of Guadalparral was made to calculate the summer solstice. Another implies that it served as a temple and another idea claims it might have been a physical map of the nearby river Tagus. Raíces de Paraleda created a Change.org petition in hopes of obtaining enough signatures to persuade the Spanish government to remove the circle from the reservoir and onto dry land, or preferably, into a museum. So far, their petition has over 45,000 signatures. It's a dire situation as history crumbles in front of our very eyes. The stone megaliths have already begun to crumble into nothingness due to their years underwater, and if nothing is done soon, they will disappear forever. In Castaños' own words, if we don't act now, it could be too late. Hubble spies a scintillating globular cluster. In recent years, the James Webb Space Telescope has proved itself in the world of astrophotography as one of the greatest photographic space telescopes made to date. Despite this, the Hubble Space Telescope is still standing its ground as the most dependable and reliable space telescope. Hubble has managed to capture an awe-inspiring photograph from within the constellation of Sagittarius. The cosmic photograph represents a stunning star cluster. NASA and the European Space Agency have labelled it a globular star cluster, giving it the name NGC 6540. Astronomers used Hubble's Advanced Camera for surveys and Wide Field Camera 3 to obtain this amazing photograph. Separately, the photos showcase alternative fields of view, but when joined, they show the cluster in its full glory. Globular clusters are stable, tightly bound swarms of stars that can hold tens of thousands to millions of stars, all trapped in a closely packed group by their mutual gravitational attraction. The Hubble telescope is the best telescope to use in order to analyze how old the stars in the cluster are and how they are structured. By investigating these colossal clusters, we might gain insight into the specifics of how our universe formed and the inner workings of stars. By observing NGC 6540 and similar globular clusters, astronomers seek to find out more about how our galaxy might have come into being. According to NASA, the brightest stars in this image are adorned with prominent cross-shaped patterns of light known as diffraction spikes. As light enters the telescope, its path is slightly disturbed by the telescope's four secondary mirror supports. The diffraction spikes form when light waves recombine on the other side of these supports. They are only noticeable in very bright objects where light is concentrated in one spot, as in the case of bright stars. Light from objects like galaxies and nebulae is dimmer and more spread out, so we do not normally see diffraction spikes on images of these objects. NGC 6540 is not the only cluster that Hubble has photographed in recent times, however. Another lies in the constellation of Scorpio and is known as globular cluster Terzan II. The Advanced Camera for Surveys, 
known as the ACS camera, was installed onto Hubble in 2002. Since then, the camera has captured over 125,000 cosmic photographs. But what are your thoughts on these new discoveries? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.